Hey, everybody. I want to thank everybody for coming out to CF Summit 2021 this year. It's been an absolutely amazing couple of days. Uh, we've had so many speakers talking about so many great things, and I had a great time. Hopefully, you all had a great time. And I want to thank you for joining uh, us here for the last talk on the last day here. Uh, my name is Mark Takata. I'm the technical uh, evangelist for Adobe Cold Fusion, and I just wanted to officially welcome our new senior product manager for Adobe Cold Fusion, Aditya Nima. Um, and I just wanted to have him introduce himself. We're going to chat about a few things. We're going to talk about development, his history, his background, his hobbies. So, um, so Aditya, I've heard a rumor uh, that you're kind of a cross between James Bond and Travis Pastrana. Like, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your hobbies and like, uh, what you know, tell us about Aditya. Hey everyone, uh, as Mark just rightly said, I'm Aditya. Uh, if, if at all, uh, any, if you have any issues ever in pronouncing, you can also call me Adi by my first three letters, ADI. Uh, that's what my friends uh, call me. Uh, about me, uh, I think uh, the earliest memory I have of myself touching a computer or having a hand on it was grade four. And uh, my father uh, bought me an Atari 800 computer and uh, that used to run just a blue screen, right? And on that blue screen, you could code up in basic language. So along with that computer, and at that point in time, you didn't have monitors, right? So that computer would somehow connect to uh, a CRT television, which we had, and it used to play in cassettes. So I don't know if you remember the old cassettes on which you play audio songs, but- Oh, I remember, play, yeah, so, classic, right? It will, it will <laughs> play programs on that cassette. And uh, there was a manual book in which you learned how to code. So while I was still learning how to code, the first program I remember I remembered was the funny man. And it was, it was like you fill up pixels with colors, you put some sound behind the screen, and it practically builds uh, a creature of a man on the screen. Uh, post that, uh, I, as, as I grew up, I, I really developed more and more interest in computers. Uh, and I went to do my undergraduate uh, in computer science as majors. Uh, that was a four-year program. So I'm an engineer uh, uh, with my majors in computer science. Uh, again, throughout the college, uh, coding used to be my uh, hobby come forte. I, I, I was known to be a good coder uh, in my college. That was my positioning uh, back in the day. And then my first gig as a professional developer was with Amazon. Uh, Pretty good I first gig. For about... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so that was about three and a half years. Uh, I worked on the pricing engine. That is, uh, how do you do automated pricing for each and every SKU, which is sold on Kindle. And uh, I learned a lot about backend development at that point in time. Uh, really, really got into how to build uh, high scale applications, uh, how to productionize apps. Like before that, it was it was all about bringing up something which will be really low scale uh, monoliths and move on to really microservices uh, into development. And at the, some point in time, I, I decided to go for my business majors. Uh, but my again, my business majors was in uh, entrepreneurship. I tried a hand at a startup as well. Uh, that didn't work out so well. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I became a product manager. And since the last five years, I've been a last seven years, I've been a PM, out of which the last five years, I've been uh, working across Microsoft and Walmart, and most recently with Adobe. Uh, in Microsoft, I worked on MS Teams, uh, as well as the developer segment of Bing.com. Uh, nice. What does the developer segment mean? Uh, you have a troubleshooting query, you search it on Bing.com, the answer experience which comes up, uh, that will be powered up by the developer segment. And in Walmart, I was looking at the business side of things. So how do you grow the Walmart marketplace? Uh, overall, during this whole journey, uh, at least in the last five years, there was a tussle inside me, whether to be a product manager, whether to be a software developer. And that's where Cold Fusion comes into picture because it's a sweet spot. 
uh, it's like developing a product for the developers and then that's what i feel passionate about so most recently like i guess 3 months ago i went to andamans uh to travel and uh, there i did a scuba course it's called the paddy open water scuba course so they use they teach a lot of skills to you there are about 54 odd skills which you need to pass to become an open water scuba diver so the last skill on the last day was called seesaw so what he does is that he takes you 8 meters down the water and then he says that you wear like you breathe air via via a, a tank like a mask and 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 what he says is that now your air is over so you need to come back on top of the water and stay alive so basically you need to swim back up uh, you need to inflate your life jacket uh, while blowing into the life jacket and he said if you do okay right i will say you did okay you just passed so that was the sign for okay he said if you do good i'll say good right because we are not speaking there so that was the sign for good if you do awesome then that's the sign for awesome and until now in the last couple of months what i am feeling within cold fusion as well as the cold community cold fusion community like talking to so many people is awesome right on. <laughs> yeah i i actually so i'm a i'm i'm a scuba diver as well um and and my my favorite thing when i was getting certified i actually got certified in a lake uh, not as nice as where you got certified uh there were no beaches where where i got certified and the highlight of my certification was getting bitten by a bass because i made it angry cuz i was you know it was a lake i could only see like this far and i ended up disturbing its nest and a big bass came out and nabbed me on the face but i still passed <laughs> but moving on from that um so it's really interesting to me that you come from a, a very like developer heavy background in some ways we sort of mirror our our backgrounds mirror we're both developers and we're moving into these like product roles and evangelism roles um and what was it really about cold fusion that drew you in um that that just kind of like like what what makes you passionate about cold fusion that's a that's a really uh, good and broad question actually uh, i mean every single week uh, that passes i i realize something new about cold fusion right so if i have to go chronologically uh, backwards or forwards i can tell you two different story so let me tell you from the both the directions right if sure. i talk about most recent today or in the last two weeks right i realized that our business grew 20% i mean wow i mean it's like being a, like being a part of a rocket ship being a part of a growing business is every product manager's dream and uh, super brilliant like it is super organic growth which means every single geography grew and, uh, and 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 that looks brilliant to me and that's the graph which has been continuing to grow not just this year but over the last 5 years and uh, yeah. our user base is growing the community is so passionate till now i've spoken to about 10 people uh, from the cf community and the kind of conversation we have i mean i learn so much from from the cold fusion community from the people uh, uh, who are building applications production grade applications user facing applications solving solving great problems of the world i mean uh, it's it's a learning every single day and i'm loving it So that's that's the story if i try to tell it from this side right from the other side uh, when i started off on cold fusion i joined i thought like let me get some hands on on cold fusion and i thought like let me write some application which which i really wanted to write for long but it's been pending so i i ran an affiliate marketing blog and mm-hmm. uh, over there i compare a few like ergonomic products and uh, and uh, the one of the thing which i constantly need to do like week over week is update the prices of these products there are about 10 or products listed there in order to do those i would like till now i would ideally go to each and every uh, sku figure yeah, out the price one. see if it is updated <laughs> yeah <laughs> go back to my wordpress a uh, uh, wordpress theme uh, slash elementor uh, update those prices and get running like pretty much a one one and a half hour exercise if i wanted to pri- update the price that way so i thought let me do something about that so there is something called product advertising api by amazon uh, if i am running the amazon affiliate program so i thought that i'll create a product which will connect to this api pull in the price save it in a database uh, take it out week over week push it in an email to me as well as sometimes i work work with my cousin who helps me uh, 
run run this website as well so we'll email it to both of us yeah. and and i started off the first thing i realized the ease of writing database queries in gold field blown boom uh i if i had to do the same thing in java uh, and i come from a java background so if i had to do the same thing in java i would be worried about opening a session closing a session or even before that i'd be worried about getting an orm into the picture integrating hibernate uh integrating c3p0 like a data pool there is a there is definitely a default one there but getting those settings right i mean in order to get it working itself would be a weekend job right in a weekend you've got your database connected you've written your first query here in a weekend i got connected to the product advertising api i pulled the data i put it uh, in the database via cf query i pulled it back i generated a pdf out of it using cf html to pdf uh, that was one weekend right second weekend i emailed it to me and my cousin and on the second weekend i also thought that you know maybe this automation looks good now we have the prices available side by side so we can go and update it why to update it so how can i write a rest api on top of it and pretty much get my wordpress plugin to read it from from the rest api so i got the cf rest api up and running uh, but i'm still figuring out uh, how to integrate it with my wordpress plugin uh, so overall what i felt was if i had to do this uh, in a couple of languages which i knew like ruby or java it would take me much more time uh, this one i was able to get it done end to end in a week like uh, the whole cf admin thing which comes up like it makes it makes configuration so easy it's so easy to get started and and that's that's my first those were my first impressions of cf uh, within the first one month of starting to use it uh, like you go to the admin panel most of the services which you use in your day to day application building are simply available you configure them very simple uh, what you see what you get kind of an uh, interface boom it's running Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's amazing to hear this, and I, I love that you come from a Java background because obviously, you know, we sit on top of Java or an abstraction on top of Java, and it's um, it's also nice that you kind of hit all the greatest hits of Cold Fusion here, right? Like making queries easy, pulling stuff from DBs, exposing APIs. Like these are all things that it's kind of like where we came from, like back in the OG days. Like that was why Cold Fusion was built was to pull data and you know put it to a screen. Um, So I I love I love hearing all that and I I want to hear more about this journey at some point too. I want to I want to see you integrate it into your uh in, into your solution, but um I also want to talk about a little bit about the, the the current status and and maybe a little bit into the future about what Cold Fusion is looking like today and and what it's maybe going to like the direction might go and I got to say the word cloud, right? Like that's been that's been the, the everyone has cloud tattoos on their on their arms these days right that's what we're we're focusing on uh and of course in 2018 that was when we started the journey 2021 expanded that but i want to hear kind of your thoughts on the cloud on the industry but less on on the cf side uh so much i mean we we've, we've heard a lot of people talk about the cloud features over the past few days but i want to like what are your thoughts on where's the cloud going like what's what's next and what's the big things today that are you know going to be more and more important as time goes by cloud is a i mean last i read a gartner report like cloud is a is a 140 billion dollar business uh, right now year on year and it is still growing uh, at a 20% plus rate uh, three major players have 55% plus market like AWS uh, Amazon and Google and rightly so i mean these has been the top top tech players they were right there by uh, to build the most highly adopted clouds as well but again if you if you do a simple google right uh, and 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 you search for like what are the top most cloud platforms right uh, the, there is a fourth entry right you'll find like AWS Azure GCP then you'll find heroku and uh, heroku is something called pass and let me let me create a hook there right there in our conversation and let's let's come to what heroku is uh, at some point time but between yeah. these three clouds like they they capture a big market share they 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 cater to our enterprises 
as well as uh, SMB small players right to get started. There are free tires. I mean, Azure is giving you, uh, uh, I guess, two thousand dollars worth of credit uh, for free. Amazon has a big free tire plan. Uh, it's it's easy to get started. But what has happened over time is that uh, while in while back in the day, right, uh, uh, 2011, 12, 13, that's when cloud really as a term started coming up and then infrastructure started coming up. Uh, it was still easy to navigate, right? If I have to take an example of AWS, it was still easy to navigate the console. The number of services were limited. There were limited ways uh, to use the cloud services. But but as we go into 2021, uh, there will be 100 plus services uh, on an, uh, on an yeah, at least. AWS cloud, right? And a lot of them will have similar features, right? Uh, a new user, uh, in fact, even in fact, like pro users will find it difficult. Oh, which service do I use? Like both of them are doing the same job. Which one right. is the right service for me? Right. Uh, as well as there are so many multiple ways to use the same service. Uh, same service. So over a period of time, like these clouds uh, will continue to grow their services base. Uh, will continue to go into more and more niches uh, to make uh, cloud native usage available to users. Uh, at the same time, uh, there will they will have to figure out a way to make it simple to abstract things out to users even more, so as to use this uh, cloud services better. And and uh, that's where I guess pass might come into picture, uh, where where using this cloud services like even the operating system will get abstracted for you, the middleware will get abstracted for you, uh, the most common stacks would be simply just available. Uh, and right to start using, which means it will be like five, six, 10 step process. Uh, and then you can get your first app up and running just by following those 10 commands by, by telling a console uh, or a UI that, you know, this is the stack I want. Uh, services will expand, uh, will be a user experience vertical, which will try to make like, like an Amazon, Amazon Elastic Beanstalk, right? It is trying to make it easier to use all of these cloud services. So that, that vertical, the user experience vertical will also grow, uh, but cloud the cloud is not going anywhere, right? It it came it solved a big problem, right? Before cloud, you had on prem, right? On prem had so many problems. Either you buy a server, you keep it in your storage room, you buy an AC, put the AC there, you manually right. manage it, you manually manage the hardware, the operating system, everything there, right? Or you bought a private cloud, again you managed the operating system and the stack upwards to it. Cloud solves uh, a lot of it, and 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 it is here to stay. And uh, coming to Cold Fusion, even I have, I think Cold Fusion uh, community embraces cloud a lot. Uh, from the from the people I've spoken to, they are either moving to cloud or they have already moved to the cloud. Uh, so so there are very very few users uh, who continue to not evaluate cloud at all. And if there are, like they have their own reasons, and and those are good reasons, uh, privacy, security, and and cold fusion still plays a big part there. Yeah. So I want to go back to something you said because uh, I, I have a little bit of a funny story. You were talking about how there's a hundred services and and all this type of thing, and. Um, I was actually talking to uh, Brian Class, who did a, a, a great talk yesterday, um, yeah. and uh, we were chatting about AWS, and we were chatting about containers in AWS. And he said something along the lines of, well, you know, Mark, there's like 18 different ways to put a container up on AWS. And of course, I laughed, there you right? Are. Oh, ha, 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 Brian, you're so funny. And then I thought about it later. I said, I wonder how many there really are. Right, uh, I, you know how, how badly was he exaggerating? Well, it turns out he wasn't exaggerating at all. There were literally eighteen ways to put a container onto AWS. And then, like maybe two weeks later, you and I were on a call with a gentleman from from Australia, just talking about stuff. And he says, "And you know, there's twenty different ways to put a container up in AWS. And this can <laughs> work for AWS." I yes. So in yes. two weeks, in two weeks, they added two more ways to put a container up onto AWS. And, and and so I think what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Like if you're a new user and you're coming into the cloud space, it's so hard to figure out, it's this gradient, right? Like, like what's the difference between this shade of, of usage and this shade? Like they seem to do 
you know, there's light sail, there's all these things that seem very, very similar, even from the same company. I'm not even talking about going to Azure or, or Google and having their service platforms uh, c- combined. And so I do think it f- kind of falls on us maybe to help make that, that, that user journey simpler for people who want it to be simple. Now, of course, there's always the person for whom that gradient matters, right? They want this extremely specific type of thing, that niche piece that that fits exactly into that they want to have full control and that's great and i think we'll always have cold fusion for them right and like you said there's right, people right. who have to be like in gov cloud that's important right mill cloud like things that are not not the public cloud not the open stuff things they have to run themselves behind firewalls totally understood you know there are people who have to do that and we will continue to support them um right. but let's talk a little bit about since I, I'm on the containers uh, angle here, microservices, because one of the great things right. that you mentioned earlier, you know, APIs, we can make APIs happen really, really easily. Um, and I feel like microservices has been this this sort of like gathering wave that's about to crash over everyone. So kind of, what are your thoughts about that? Like, where are we going um, with with microservices and, and how does Cold Fusion fit into that today and, and tomorrow? Microservices, uh, again, uh, this both microservices and cloud uh, will like will follow one pattern uh, that is standardization, right? Microservices is standardization of architectural pattern, like how should you architecture your applications? Again, with cloud, uh, things will move to standardization. That example which you gave, uh, 18 versus 20 ways to deploy a container, like over a period of time, uh, there will be the right patterns uh, for the right kind of use cases where where standardization, much more standardization comes into picture and and it's got a collapse one a form, bit. one kind of application uh, will use one kind of way uh, to do things that might reflect on provisioning, that might reflect on logging, monitoring, uh, health status, uh, everything like standardization across because you don't want... Uh, developers in your company to be doing same things in two different ways, right? If they do the same thing in the same way, your code is maintainable, uh, mm-hmm. your uh, your IP is there, now, as well as the people uh, who are working in it, they learn one standardized way. So the next time they have to develop, let's say, an API, oh, within, within our company, there is just one way to develop an API and connect it to Amazon RDS, and it is this way, right? So now it's it's out there, it's done and dusted. I mean, there is just one way. Now let me think about building the custom layer uh, for the user. And and microservices follows the same pattern, right? Uh, the one architectural pattern built on top of APIs uh, has evolved uh, into microservices. And, and then now there is a standard uh, which exists uh, that how to develop, how should you develop your applications for the best possible throughput, for the best possible resiliency, for the best possible fault tolerance, uh, for the best possible use of cloud, uh, for best possible cost optimization. Uh, microservices is taking one big applications, bringing it like breaking it into small pieces. I guess I guess it follows uh, the, theory, the, the theory that you know one one piece of code should really do just one thing, which means if you want uh, to do ten different things, you bring up ten APIs get them talking to each other and then build your application. What this does is that it keeps separation of concerns. We don't really, if someone is uh, dealing with a job X, he doesn't have to be concerned with the job Y, he can do job X in the best possible way. Uh, if the job X fails, job Y doesn't need not to be, uh, does need not uh, really comply and fail. It can still be alive and running. Uh, that's, the, that's the fault tolerance bit which microservices bring in. Uh, you can pretty much deploy them separately. Uh, so each one will have their own life cycle. And uh, great that you started this conversation with containers. A, a very uh, interesting thing which comes to my mind with containers is how did containers come up? So these containers and microservices, they came up together, right? Because uh, if you were to deploy your micro, <laughs> if you were to deploy your microservices, right? You can't simply, or people face challenges uh, when they you can you can actually deploy it on one single operating system, but people face challenges deploying all their microservices on the same operating system. Primarily because if one microservice decided to use a lot of resources 
of your CPU, pretty much all the right. others would be affected as well, right? Each microservice could also require its own operating system could be developed in its own way, right? That's where separation of concerns come into picture. That's where containers came into picture. Very small operating system. It really rips off anything which is not needed uh, to deploy, let's say, a Tomcat server. Uh, mini operating system, put your application in it and deploy it anywhere. Uh, so microservices, containers going hand in hand. Containers have become a 2 billion market, growing at whooping 32%. Whooping 32%, which means every two and a half years, the usage of microservices is doubling. A research by IDC shows that 99%, which practically means every single organization in the world, has either evaluated or evaluating uh, use of microservices. And 99% is pretty much everyone in the world. Yeah. I, I feel like it's a paradigm shift. I mean, in, in some ways it's similar to maybe not quite as big, like, like going to object oriented programming, or it's this, it's this idea that this pattern is extremely successful. It's extremely scalable. Um, like something that you were talking about, if you can separate these out, not only are you keeping them fault tolerant, but um, nobody's microservices all scale at the same rate, right? Like you, you end up highly, highly using one portion of it and not the other. You can scale just those microservices and it's cheaper because before, if it's a monolith or it's all running in one place, you got to scale the whole thing. Um, and here you can actually just scale the individual pieces. Uh, and we're not even, I mean, we're not even talking about serverless yet, right? Like this is a, a, another potential uh, facet to this, right? Microservices based on serverless. That's a, that's a whole other uh, ball of wax, right? Um, and we added a little bit of support for... Um, for, for that in CF 2021. We don't quite have it running with CF yet, um, but maybe soon. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really kind of a, a wild thing, but I want to, I want to back up because you kind of put a, you put a little pin in something earlier that I want to, um, that I want to talk about. And that's Heroku. So I don't know <laughs> if a lot of people are, are familiar with Heroku, um, I'm mostly familiar with it from uh, signing up for a lot of CFML slacks or a, a bunch of different slacks. Like everyone uses Heroku because it'll just spin up as it need, needs to be. Um, but you mentioned that as kind of in the same breath as cloud, but it's not, it's not really cloud, but it is, right? So can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, Heroku is an example. Like Heroku is an example because it, it was on that list on number four, but Broadly, Heroku, Google App Engine, Amazon, Elastic Beanstalk, uh, Azure App Service, they all fall under an umbrella called Platform as a Service. Uh, again, Platform as a Service is, a, is, again, something like software development follows one, one pattern, right? Which is, which is something new comes up, people start uh, embracing it, it gets adopted, and then it gets standardized. Right. Uh, for example, today uh, in uh, RDBMS, it is it, it, there are very standard patterns to query an RDBMS, get data out of it, as well as uh, do the crowd operations. Right. Similarly, uh, what PaaS is doing is that it is uh, abstracting the cloud layer, which means this Heroku example which we spoke of, it is built on top of AWS, and so it abstracts AWS for you. It provides you a very standardized way to use the cloud and cloud services, uh, which means uh, if I go to any pass, uh, the getting started page of any pass, it will give you a six step to 10 step guide, you know, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, E, F, there you go. That's your first app, which is deployed on a main stack uh, or an AWS EC2 plus RDS stack. And, and it is up and running. Now it is up to you to write your business logic, which means your middleware is extracted for you. Operating system is extracted for you. All you have to care about is really just writing your business logic, uh, which is the custom layer, right? Which will differ for everyone, right? That's where your product creates value for your customers. But all the other mundane tasks uh, is something which a pass will standardize, right? So the previous example which you gave, right? 18 different ways to deploy a container. How many ways will there be in a pass to deploy a container? Maybe just one, right? Now, each pass will have its own way, for sure, right? Heroku will have dynos. EC2 will use its own container registry. Plus, uh, Elastic Beanstalk will use the AWS infrastructure. Azure App Service will use Microsoft's infrastructure. Uh, 
but uh, all of them will standardize their own ways of using that cloud right what does it mean for cf uh, well we we are following the same pattern 2018 onwards right we are also standardizing the use of native services if you, if you look at uh, the integrations which we come out uh, for native services those are standard one single way uh, to use a native service so 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 it becomes easy for you uh, maybe mimic that cf query uh, interface for all the other data integrations uh, which are coming out of cloud and and we would we would like to follow uh, the same way to standardize using usage of microservices uh, as well as cloud uh, in futures right that means you might have one single way to do everything follow your whole app development life cycle one single way of provisioning one way of uh, logging monitoring health uh, development deploying ci cd uh, and that would be the standardized way that would be the happy path way happy happy path case at the same time uh, the users who want to switch away from it branch out from it have much more flexibility on the how they want to use their resources whether on prem or on cloud uh, that flexibility will still exist uh, that's yeah that's a good point too something that that you just mentioned um it made me think of i was i was just trying to describe cold fusion to somebody and they were asking like well what's cold fusion because i get that a lot because <laughs> it's literally my job um but uh, it's it's kind of disingenuous to describe cold fusion as a language right it's not it's more than that um and Much really in it's somewhat of like a ecosystem, really. Like it's not a pass, it's not, right? It's, it doesn't exist until you, you put it into place. But once it's in place, you know, we've got the administrator that's essentially a very powerful dashboard, which kind of similar, right, to, to a pass. We've got, you know, the, um, the PMT, we have the API manager, right? All of these different pieces already kind of mimic some of the features that um, something like a pass can do or, or 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 would do, maybe. Um, and so I think there's a lot of there's a lot of like interesting ways that we could go with with cold fusion down down the down the road. Um, the other thing too that I was that that you were mentioning is like when you have a pass, it gives you these options um, to do things like add in like testing, for example, right? Because it kind of guides you on your SDLC. And um, and you could do things maybe even like adding templating, right? right. Like that's right. that's an incredibly powerful thing. If you have a controlled environment that you can sort of predict where things are going to live, what the server looks like, all of that, you can offer people these opportunities to use you know pre-selected and pre-built pieces. They don't, we're not going to give them a whole app necessarily, but. Right. Um, and that kind of follows this uh, this cold fusion, making hard things simple, making development fast methodology that will get you 20% of the way there. Well, hey, guess what? I just saved you 20% of your development time. Yeah, like, exactly. that's, it's so powerful. Um, you so, brought up that line, right? Making hard things easy. And, uh, and, and the thought that comes to my mind is that, yes, like that's what we have been doing and that's what we'll continue to do. Uh, with cloud, with microservices, uh, it's guided development, right? Like uh, the the philosophy which you were speaking of, right? You know, eight eight steps, and then we'll take care of the mundane steps for you. Uh, you don't really have to care about mundane steps. You care about writing your custom logic, the custom layer, uh, and and how do we bring more 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 guide, more guide, uh, standardized guides. Uh, as a part of the product as well, right? Now, now, how does that manifest? Is 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 something will uh, uh, will 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 create uh, a part of? Uh, but yeah, uh, that's 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 hard things to do. Hard things easy is 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 definitely the motto across all the uh, steps of the app life cycle. Right? Exactly. Yeah, it, it's it's and it's a challenge. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we talk, you know, like, oh, we could just do this, right? <laughs> Um, but but it is a challenge, and to get where we've gotten has been um, a long journey and, and very difficult uh, already. Uh, and you know the future is is weird. <laughs> the future is sort of up in the cloud and 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 in pieces. Like people are talking about Web 3.0 now, and I'm just like shaking my head. You know, highly distributed things. Um, we had a couple of talks about 
you know, using cold fusion for machine learning, right? Like that's, that's awesome. Like uh, the, the, it, there's so many different places that, that we could go with CF and, and so many like, ways that we could we could reach into that we don't have to go all the way in but you know we could like bring in people from all these other verticals um to help them get their stuff done faster um so <clears throat> um i don't know if you did you have any uh, other things you wanted to chat about um or we can start to ask we can start to get questions if you wanted to handle some questions hey sure let's uh let's let's uh let's get them yeah let me let me jump in so i'm gonna i'm gonna grab the first question this is from william bell um william asked where is cf primarily used today uh what is it used in federal state local government uh commercial uh they kind of want to know where you know where are our clients these days i think uh, william answered uh Part of the question uh, where he says that you know fed local uh, government uh, i think there are a lot of e users in the edu vertical uh, as well uh, that's where uh, they develop uh, solutions uh, for education right lmss student teacher facing applications then there will be a lot of users in your uh, uh, fintech space like uh, financial applications. Uh, then there will be a lot of use cases for internal apps, HR apps, payroll apps, uh, which would be across organizations, not verticalized because almost every single organization needs it. There is a use case for single paid apps. Uh, again, people who need to bring up quick, quick single page applications. Pretty much that's a very interesting question actually. Now, if, if I have to think industry wise, you're present everywhere. Like I can't really pinpoint that these are the industries where we are the most prevalent in. We we are a horizontal. We are a true horizontal uh, in terms of that. We are there uh, in a lot of industries, right? Because because we cater to a lot of applications which require a CMS. We cater to a lot uh, and CMS for external facing and internal facing applications. Uh, LMS application tracking. Uh, and and these are like use cases which which are present pretty horizontally. Uh, and so to answer that question, yes, yes, uh, we are there. In government, DOD, Fed space, uh, education space, uh, commercial, which will actually be a big big horizontal. Uh, so can't really pinpoint those four five four five industries. Yeah, and I would I would only add there's um th there's a lot of quiet CF use out there which which is uh, it's kind of been detrimental in some ways uh, because you we have constantly get this like CF is is cold fusion dead right and it's not dead it's not even sick <laughs> uh, interesting interestingly one one thing which caught my eye is that uh, we have uh, 550k plus websites uh, up and running uh, on CF. And uh, and that's where, like, since the number is so huge, uh, we do have representation, not just like in industries, but in geographies, uh, but in applications, uh, almost around the globe. Yeah, and, and keep in mind that five hundred and fifty thousand uh, figure is only ones that are available to be like detectable, right? Those are those are ones that have an endpoint that we can actually detect using uh, built with, right? This is the the site. That, that, that we used to, to see that. Um, there's a ton of internal apps at, you know, we're, we're really big in government, military, um, science, and a lot of those sites, they're not available externally, right? They don't, they don't have endpoints that point to the outside web. They're, they're for internal use only. So, you know, we're actually a little bit bigger than, than, than even that. So um, let me move to the next uh, question. So Rama asks- Hi. Um, is, uh, Mark, I, okay, go ahead. Uh, oh. I just read a question as well. Uh, oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Why don't you, why don't you handle yeah, it? Uh, this is the most recent one, uh, which just popped on the screen. Like, is Adobe going, this is by Brian. Uh, is Adobe going to improve how we generate reports out of CF? With uh, CF report depreciated, I use documents, spreadsheet heavily, but there seems to be a few improvements in these, especially related to generating PDF. Mm, great question. Um, question. Yes. 
yes we we do we do think that our document services are used really heavily by the users we constantly work on it uh, most recently uh, uh, one of the features of the future uh, upcoming roadmap would be uh, on improving uh, the html to pdf uh, conversion capability so yes we 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 we, we do realize that's, that that the, all the document services play a really important and pivotal role especially in the use cases around where where users generate reports uh, bills invoices uh, and uh, and and yes i mean brand your fit hit the nail on the head like we do have uh, pdf improvements uh, in this uh, in the upcoming uh, uh, plan for the upcoming uh, release cycle and I, I would only add to that, um, you know, I, I, and there are definitely people who love um, the CF report builder tool, which, which, you know, of course is deprecated. We're not, we're no longer moving forward with building that tool. Um, and I think one of the things that led to that decision was just this ability to, to uh, take cold fusion, create APIs and connect them to other report building tools very easily so that you weren't just locked in, into one thing. Um, but there's definitely things we can continue to do. And it's something really good to look at. Um, I'm actually going to go up. So I'm going to go to an older uh, question. Rama asks, is CF going to integrate supporting or building seamless Android iOS apps uh, and any plans for doing like crypto um, stuff like BTC ETH apps? Is that anything that we're looking at right now? Uh, we are... Uh, we are uh... I mean, there are multiple ways uh, where I where I look uh, when when I see this question. Uh, I think of because we intend to be uh, the the most productive platform uh, to build microservices to be cloud native, right? And all these all these applications of these, like for example, uh, developing an Android app, it will have a backend which which will be built out of cloud like APIs, right? Because that's how an Android will interact. So, so we do, we are already there uh, where, where we enable you to develop uh, any application, any kind of interface seamlessly. Similarly, uh, with, with, with the cryptos platform, right? They'll follow the same architectural patterns. So underlying, uh, underlying CF already enables a lot of those. Uh, Hopefully, in future, which with with more add-ons, uh, with more services, uh, we'll come out with native integrations as well. Uh, sometime uh, as as CF grows in its journey over the next several years. And also, Rama, I'm not sure if you caught the um, the talk. It was earlier today um, by someone from Ionic who did a talk on uh, creating uh, basically very very uh, easy to build mobile apps um, using their platform, which of course can lock onto any API source and consume it, which of course Cold Fusion is really good at doing that. So um, that's that's something else to consider. You know, we we kind of went down the path a while back ago uh, to, to look into doing our own mobile stuff, but it feels like that there, it's, it's moving so fast. There's so many different places. I think it makes a lot of sense to consider being very open in that and allowing a lot of different uh, things to consume our, our APIs. Um, William asks, uh, is anyone running CF on a Chromebook? <laughs> I don't think so. It's, it's, yeah, did, have you heard of anyone? Uh, Not yeah. I, no, I don't think, I don't think anyone's running them on, on, on Chromebooks. Um, is it possible? I mean, I don't know. Probably, I've I've heard of people uh, running uh, CFML engines on, um, on like Raspberry Pis. So hey, <laughs> sky's the limit. Um, random question: Are you guys using tags, script, or mixed? Uh, like the answer for me, I use I use a mix. Um, I don't know about you, Aditya. Like, what's your pattern when you're actually coding? Mixed, mixed. Uh, somewhere, uh, a lot of places where tags tags simply just do what you need them to do. Uh, a lot of places, uh, more flexibility is provided by uh, script. So it's it's mixed. Okay. Um, how many people on the CF team? A lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. I'm, try 
I'm trying to think. I don't even know. I mean, we have so many. Uh, there's there's so many people across. You know, we've got engineers. We've got the, the whole support team. We have the customer success team, the sales team. I mean, we've got product. Um, we've got me holding up the fort in evangelism. So I, well, I don't know, like a couple dozen. I actually don't know that the answer to that, unfortunately. Um, maybe we can find that out for you. But um, Let oh, me this is this a good one. question. This is by Robert. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, what is the, um, he's asking, what is the builder VS Code plan when available? Will this be an Adobe product or an extension uh, for VSC? Uh, it will be an extension for VSC, uh, but it can still be an Adobe product. So it's not uh, an, an, an odd situation, but it's, it's definitely a, an extension for VSC. Uh, what we have heard from you guys is that uh, uh, VSC is something uh, which everybody loves to code on. Uh, it, it provides extensions uh, for not just CF, uh, but but any other affiliated technology which you're using uh, to develop on, which means one single IDE uh, to develop your applications. Uh, that's where the thought of VSC comes into picture. Uh, we are definitely on it. It's, it's actively built in progress and uh, it will be out there uh, sometime next year. Uh, before the next release, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 it is coming. I know, like trademark coming soon, right? Um, um, I, I I can tell you, it's it's definitely going to be an Adobe product. I, I think maybe what you were asking there is if it's going to be like open source, and the answer to that is no. Um, it's not going to be open source. However, there is some talk about um, doing some documentation for the language server potentially. So if you guys want to like hook into it and, you know, build your own stuff and have fun with it, uh, that might be available. We just need to see like when we can get this thing out. Cause we really kind of want to get this out to you. Uh, Cause it's going to be awesome. It's going to be the best extension out there, or I don't know, I'll buy you a coffee. Uh, <laughs> um, so Brandon asked, uh, does CF have any plans for making their own data table with built-in export sorting, pagination, and such. Um, I mean, I I haven't heard. I mean, Mark, of you are the better person to take that question. Yeah, yeah, it, I, I, it, it's very relevant to the talk which you get. Yeah, I mean, I I really want to say, you know, that, that we 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 had CF Grid uh, a, a while back, which is probably where that's kind of coming from potentially. Um, but, uh, you know, I feel like there's so many great solutions on the front end, including, you know, data tables, uh, which I use extensively, that it, it almost doesn't really make sense for us to, to go down that road. Like, I, I feel like that's a very, uh, you know, front end uh, friendly type of thing. And a lot of solutions handle it. From our end, uh, we need to make sure that what we're outputting um, actually makes sense and is can be consumed by uh, by these tools, right? So we have to be industry standard. Our JSON has to be done right. I think that's really the answer. I don't think we're going to be doing much server side uh, stuff. Like we really want to handle the logic, the data access, all of that, and then um, hand the data off to a front end framework. And you know whether that's on mobile or uh, or anywhere, or even just an API to API interface. But hopefully that answers that question. Um, so we are really close uh, to the end of yeah. time here. So I'm going to uh, let uh, Aditya finish us off here. Uh, thanks, guys, uh, for coming over to the talk. I, I do appreciate you guys uh, taking the time, uh, uh, not just for the talk, uh, but but for the whole summit. Uh, I do love uh, the, the close-knit community, which we are, uh, while I've not been very active on Slack uh, till now, uh, but I've read a lot of conversations uh, going on Slack, and and I do learn a lot from you guys. Uh, if there is if there is anything uh, which I can help you out with, or if you just wanted to have a very quick discussion, even if not quick, even if it is long, on Cold Fusion, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is anima uh, at adobe dot com. I'm also available on Slack, uh, and uh, and I'll be really happy uh, to. Sit down with you, have a chat, over a coffee, uh, over a beer, uh, <laughs> virtually for now. Uh, hopefully when things open up, maybe even personally. Uh, but I'm super, super eager uh, to meet you guys. Uh, those are my coordinates. Uh, if there's anything uh, under the sun which you want to discuss, cold fusion, non-cold fusion, cricket, scuba diving, movies, 
<laughs> just hit me and, up. Uh, and to, 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 to clarify, right before we run out of uh, time, that Slack is the CFML Slack. That is where Aditya is, is available. Yeah. I am there as well. Uh, Mark Takata Adobe at uh, CFML Slack. If you are not a part of that community yet, please Google CFML Slack and hit the Heroku, <laughs> Heroku, Heroku app, sign up. It's free. It's a great community. Um, I'd love to see you there and chat as well. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye.